<laughs> home away from home. Waterville, Beth Wester. That's where I've been for the last couple of days. This is where the friendly staff greets all their guests. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, you gotta be. We're gonna put you on America's Most Wanted. There's a pretty lady. Oh, she won't mind being on video. Now, what's your name? Uh, we have not found one volunteer of the friendly staff to be on video. Yeah, very friendly, but not on video. Not on video. Are you guys gonna have breakfast on? We are. We're gonna have breakfast. Only if you'll be on video, though. No. I think you need a lot more sugar than you put in there, though. Well, I have been fishing in the state of Maine. I fished on Golden Pond, or Great Pond, where they made Golden Pond. And I want to head up to Moosehead, the largest lake in the state, a couple of hundred miles away. And I'm looking on the map, and I'm thinking, which lake do I want to fish before I get to Moosehead? And I see this lake, Sebec. That's right on the way as well as another hundred different lakes. So I'm just picking out of the hat where I'm gonna go. What a beautiful lake. This is a challenge. We start with nothing, like a thousand piece puzzle, all in a box and we dump it out on the table. And it's so cool we put that puzzle together before we leave. So I'm gonna be fishing today in the state of Maine on Sebec Lake, and it's going to be an educational show. How about that, an educational show, I like that. Some really big ones in here. You stay with me, I'm Hank Parker. Hey, I will tell you, it ends up pretty good. It starts out a little rough, but it ends up good. That's neat clouds on that pointed mountain, how pretty that is. I have ever been here before, but it's kind of neat. I got the dirtiest boat I've ever had. We got behind a logging truck <laughs> on a rainy day in Maine. This is always a good thing to do when you got a good clear lake. But we're just bouncing from lake to lake, never been here before, don't have a clue what to expect. But I've noticed automatically looking at my birds that we got some really deep water 180 feet back there in one place a lot of 100 foot water so we've got a deep lake and water temperature is about 60 degrees about four degrees cooler and about maybe 60 miles north of where we fished yesterday so i don't know what to expect but it's beautiful i want to start casting on that automatically but we're, i'm going to go look for some areas rocky islands, points, places that fish will move up to spawn because a lot of good smallmouth in this lake and they should be moving up to spawn. So it's either pre-spawn or spawn. I know it's 60 degrees they hadn't already spawned. So it's either pre-spawn or spawn. So I'm gonna start looking for some spawning areas. Probably start out throwing a jerk bait, uh, maybe a tube, maybe a sinking uh, worm, uh, may throw old pawpaw, but we're gonna do something uh, in the spawning area. So that's kind of a cool looking lake. We're ready to rock and roll. Brand new lake, never been there before. I'm looking at this lake and I'm seeing jerk bait. I'm seeing a slug. I'm seeing sinking worm written all over Sebec Lake. Man, it's beautiful. God, it's almost overwhelming. It's so beautiful. Rocks, big boulders, but it's dark water. I I'm surprised, so it's caught me a little bit off guard. It looks so clear. Man, we've got big high banks on both sides of us. We're very protected from the wind. There he is, how about that, right off the bat. But this water's dark, and I can't see very good, so I use a jerk bait, I use a black sinking worm, I catch a few small fish, Man, I'm surprised. I'm really, really surprised. We can't figure anything out in this, this dark water. So I start changing up. I start fishing some top water. I start fishing a little slower. I start throwing a jig. I, I, I'm moving around and trying to figure this thing out. There he is. I hear something. Small man. Oh, that's the first one. 
Hey, buddy. Saw a man I come out of his mouth. shallow he's all excited it's pretty exciting to come to a lake you've never been to before just pick it out on a map go the state of Maine there's so many of these lakes second only to Minnesota which is the land of 10,000 lakes I'm just wacky styling a Sinking worm, throwing it in there and letting it sink by the rock. And I was surprised at how shallow that fish was. He was just right tight on that rock. I've been letting it sink out deeper. Try to jerk bait, try to tube bait. And I was just thinking about tying on top water bait. <sighs> was not a fish, that was a false alarm. Just thinking about tying on a top water bait, I thought, well, try that sinking worm a minute. Keep on looking, keep on searching, keep on scratching. Now it's fairly late in the afternoon what we put in, and I'm just, buddy, I'm whipped. I, I, I wasn't able to put hardly anything together. You couldn't see what I looked for beds. I couldn't find any beds, and I tried really hard because Great Pond was so good on bed fishing. Water temperature is good. It's like 64 degrees, and I'm thinking, fish got to be on the beds. Could not find them. If there's a bed here, you should be able to see it. Do you know how to spell challenge? <laughs> That's what we got going on here. I, th I think it starts with a C. There's four beds. That's amazing. We go all over the lake, come right back here to the ramp, and there'll be a bass on the boat dock. This portion of Hank's show is brought to you by Berkeley. Catch more fish. Yeti coolers, built for the wild. Now it's time for Hank's tip of the day. Berkeley soft baits, you know, people ask me questions a lot about the difference between gulp, power bait, and havoc. And it, it's a great question. Keith Jones at Berkeley decided a long time ago when people were using all these water-based scents to spray on their plastic worms, if you really want to make that stay on there and you want to make it smell and taste like a real bait fish to get fish to hold it longer, you need to be able to cook that in and blend that in and make it in the product itself. And that's where power bait was born. They worked, it worked, it worked. And I can tell you, fish hold on to it. They will eat it. They love this stuff. And so in making that, they have actually cooked a part of what is in gulp into the plastic worm. And it makes power bait. And they have a lot of great colors. And it's a different texture. It is a unique bait that will catch fish when the water is a little muddy, when the fish are a little bit lethargic, when you really got to finesse a fish to bite, especially in off-colored water. So you say then, well, why would you make Havoc? Havoc is a bait that they don't cook anything in. So to get that straight, good, beautiful texture and color and transparency that you can't get when you cook in the flavor that goes into power bait to make those fish hold on to it. 
So Havoc is a, is a soft plastic bait that is made strictly for sex appeal. Transparent, good looking, beautiful colors. Uh, so if you're fishing in crystal clear water and you don't really need to finesse those fish and those fish are primarily feeding by sight, then Havoc is the bait of choice. If you're fishing in really, really muddy water, if you're fishing for smallmouth, or you're fishing for fish that are really, really tough to catch, then gulp. Gulp is just magic on smallmouth. It is absolutely magic in the salt water. It's an amazing, lifelike smell and taste. Doesn't have near the action as a power bait, nowhere close to the action that a Havoc has, but it has that special uh, taste and smell, and it actually puts off a film in the water that fish can find it for long distance. So there's your three basic soft plastic baits made by Berkeley. Power bait is my favorite. Uh, gulp is probably second, and when I'm fishing in clear water, uh, I throw a habit. This whole thing is just a big rock field, this whole dang bay. To be honest with you, this sebex got me whipped. It's got me whipped now. I fished over the top water thinking maybe they were off the beds. I fished the extended points. I threw a lipless crankbait. I threw the jerk bait. I fished it deep. I fished it shallow. I fished a jig. Man, I am whipped. So we get ready to go back in and I get down around the launch area where I put my boat in and I'm just fishing there, just trying to think what I could have done wrong or what I could have done different. But I noticed, you know, I can see a lot better. The closer I am to the launch, which is about the center of the lake, I can see a lot better than what I could see when I was further up north. The water's not as dark. So I go over to the bank right there by the launch, and there's a few docks, and we're almost out of time. It's at the end of the day, light's low, so it's a difficult time to see, but I see a really good fish, see a couple of beds. He's coming out there. He's a big one too, a really big one. So I was just going to kind of call Sebek off and just throw it in and that it kicked my butt and I didn't catch any fish and I was going to move on. And boom. Big one. Look at that. I saw that fish. Look what a big fish. Woo, that's a big one. Don't lose him, don't lose him. Don't lose him. Get him in the boat. Get him in the boat. Look at that view, rascal, you. I saw him right there on that point, on that wall, on the bed. Can you believe that? We ride the whole lake. We're back at the dock. Isn't that a pretty one? Put him on the tube. You pretty thing, you. Well, at least we're not going to go away empty-handed. We caught a couple. There's three beds in here, four beds. You know, I, I didn't know hardly anything about this lake, and I was going to move on. But we stopped a couple of guys, and I asked them about Sebek, and they said, oh, man, that is one of the best lakes around for pre-spawn. Now, once the spawn starts and uh, post-spawn, it becomes a very difficult lake, but it's one of the top pre-spawn lakes in the area. And I didn't know any of that, but it is evidently a good lake, and we're right in the middle of the spawn. So right there at the launch, right there at dark, we put a little something together, so I'm coming back in the morning. I am coming back to Sebek in the morning. Right here at the dock. How about that? That's pretty sporty right there. <laughs> Hank's show is made possible in part by Luz. Feel the difference. And by Minn Kota. Soft science. Solar bath and Talon. All right, here's where I quit yesterday. So we'll hit it this morning in the waves and the wind, see if we can see something. Well, we're back, and what do I do? I go to the very first place that I left off. You can see a little bit, though. I'm surprised. 
that little breaker wall is protecting the sun. And I start looking, and sure enough, here's a bed, over there's a bed, here's a boat dock, I see a fish up under the Good boat one. dock. And again, the, the killer bait is the tube. And the reason that bait is so effective, you got a big lead head in it, it allows you to put that bait right where you want it. You just slide that tube up there on it, and it allows you to put that bait right where you want it, and it was the bait of choice. Quality fish, that fish was under the dock. And I just go down through there and put it on the beds, and it was extremely effective. Oh, another good fish. There he is. These are healthy fish, man, beautiful fish. We got one little section here. And it wasn't long. I was planning on leaving Sebec at noon. It was several hours after noon. And the reason we were late leaving is I was having too much fun. <laughs> this water is almost Coca-Cola colored. And it seems like we've been around boulders. Look at the gravel uh, where this wall has been built They've got gravel all in here. And all these fish, this whole shoreline, uh, there is gravel, pea gravel. We hadn't been able to find much pea gravel or any except this one stretch. But you can see even where it's two foot, three foot deep where these fish are spawning, you can see uh, with the pea gravel. And if you don't see them, you can't put that bait where you need to put it. There are a few fish on the dock, so that's a positive thing. I'm about five minutes late jerking on him. <laughs> I got right on top of him. But amazing. Man, I hate to leave when I start catching fish. But we were catching some good fish. So it's so much fun to figure all that out. But we went through a whole process of elimination to get to the point that, again, it was just like at Great Pond. You had to see the fish and put the bait on the fish's bed. When you did that, you hit pay dirt. A lot of fun on some bed. I rode around, just look, look, look. You see a bed, boom. Hank's show is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. All right, that's a little bitty rascal. I knew he was small, but I was bound and determined to catch him. A little fella. But if you find that bed, you can catch him, though. It's amazing. They will bite. If you don't find the bed, <laughs> you don't get a bite. You little rascal, you. It's fun, I like it. It's kind of like hunting and fishing all in one. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. I wish I had more time. I'm going to Moosehead. Uh, I've been wanting to go there ever since I left uh, Golden Pond. So I'm going to pack my mess up. We've had really, if, if I took my five biggest fish, I'd have 20 pounds of fish. We've had really, really good quality. We just hadn't had as many fish as you're used to catching. Uh, at home, 15 fish, that's an awesome day. But here in Maine, that's just kind of a mediocre at best. But I'm going to move on to Moosehead. <laughs> Hey, pick a number. We got 6,000 lakes to choose from. Uh, we just stopped on Sebec, and what a what a jewel is this lake. God, I don't know. Maine's got some beautiful places. This thing was not easy to figure out. One part of the lake was so much darker water you couldn't see. And we just kept moving around, pecking around, looking in different places. The middle part of the lake, you could actually see the bottom, and we could actually see bed and fish. And that was the whole key. If you didn't see them, you could not catch them. It was amazing. What a great time I had, 
and I love a challenge, and that is so much a big part of what really turns me on when it comes to fishing, is being able to go to a body of water and read that body of water and then start putting pieces of that puzzle together to figure it all out. And uh, man, we got on them really good there at the last at Sebec. What a beautiful place and what a great time I had figuring it all out. And uh, I learned something, I hope you did. It, it was a lot of fun. I hope you come back and join me next week and who knows where we'll be, but it'll be another adventure, I promise you that. God bless you, I'm Hank Parker. And don't forget to visit us at hankparker.com, the place for tips, giveaways, and more. The house needs painting, the grass needs mowing, where's he at? Gone fishing.